Hello and welcome to this video summarizing everything you need to know when it comes to how Hitler established a dictatorship through his use of propaganda and terror. My name is Barbara and in this video we'll examine how Hitler essentially consolidated power and strengthened his grip on Germany as Führer through his reliance on things like coercion, propaganda and information. So let's get started. Now when it comes to Hitler's aims and what he wanted, do you bear in mind that by the end of the Weimar Republic in 1933, many Germans were politically and socially divided and Hitler really wanted to see every German seeing themselves as part of one community. He wanted to establish a sense of unity amongst Germans who by 1933 were really politically divided. He also wanted to create a strong Reich. In other words, people couldn't have a choice in this Reich, but this government would be essentially quite strong and would really lift Germany out of the doldrums of economic depression, political divisions into a really united and powerful country. Hitler made Germany a dictatorship in 1933 and especially in 1934 when he made himself himself Führer and in 1933 essentially all media information was controlled. Now Nazism was really the main propaganda that Germans had to believe in and do bear in mind of course that propaganda means the control of information and essentially the control of information and putting forward very one-sided information that really showcases one side over another. Now, at first, many people really supported Hitler, but as the Nazi state tightened its grip over German people and it became more extreme, many started rejecting his views, but they feared being killed. So, of course, do you remember that the idea of terror is also something that can really control people? Now, how did Hitler achieve this dictatorship? Firstly, do remember that he relied on Joseph Goebbels, who was the Minister of Propaganda, as well as Himmler, who was the leader of the SS. Goebbels took care of the information and he was very strategic when it came to really convincing people and indoctrinating people. However, Himmler was the guy that looked after coercing people, forcing people to do what you want through the fear of terror. Now, when it came to what Goebbels did, and when it came to really creating the sense of unity and controlling the minds of Germans, firstly, he heavily relied on rallies and pageants. This was regularly done and it was a regular feature of life in Nazi Germany as it was a way of pr promoting mass conformity. Bear in mind, mass conformity and the idea of conformity is people just doing something because they're copying other people. So people essentially through these rallies and pageants would see everybody saying hail Hitler, really celebrating the Nazi state and in turn they would obey and listen to Hitler because if everybody else is doing it, surely he must be right. Another aspect that Goebbels really relied on was the use of art, film, radio and music to control how German people saw themselves and also to create a sense of pride in being a Nazi-led state. Now, art, film, radio and music, the arts really promoted the idea and the view of the Aryan peasant and ordinary Germans were shown in pictures and sang about in music and this created a sense of unity, a sense of harmony and a sense of pride. Also, organizations were really critical. So many organizations were created, such as the DAF, which is the German Workers' Front, that people had to join to work together and believe in the same thing. And of course, this was Nazism. And these organizations were a great way for Hitler and the Nazi state to really indoctrinate people. Another thing that Goebbels relied on was sports and the promotion of teamwork, as well as physical strength. And thus, Hitler used consent, propaganda and coercion. Now let's first start off with his use of consent. Now, in the early 1930s, many people supported Hitler, especially the working classes. And many Germans were really happy that Hitler had disobeyed the Treaty of Versailles conditions and he'd left the League of Nations. Now, lots of working class German people loved the Nazi promise of jobs and better working conditions. And the artisan class supported Hitler as they hated how much power trade unions had. Also, when the SPD was banned, workers who supported them that were part of the DAF, which is the German Workers' Front, and the RAD, which is the Reich Labour Service, supported the Nazis. And Hitler and the Nazis emphasised the importance of skills and making German production more efficient, which they loved. Also, leisure activities were created by the KDF, such as the Strength to Joy program, for very hard-working German people. 
Now, as I've mentioned before, propaganda was a core focus of Hitler and alongside with Goebbels, he really created a very effective propaganda machine. Now, bear in mind that Joseph Goebbels was a master of propaganda and he was extremely clever and he would use really simple ideas and people's biases, meaning everyone could follow him because he exploited just their underlying beliefs. Bear in mind firstly that Joseph Goebbels created what he called the Hitler myth, and in other words it was the Führer myth, this idea that Hitler was both Superman and a man of the people. Now all of Germany's decisions come from Hitler, who is above everyone but also below with them, and no one gets to choose, Hitler is always right as he is Superman, he knows everything. Whilst this sounds somewhat contradictory when you see it as outsiders, actually the Hitler myth was extremely successful and many people really saw Hitler as a man of the people, but equally they saw him as somebody who had really rescued Germany, hence why he was also Superman. Another thing as I've mentioned before is Joseph Goebbels relied on films for this effective propaganda machines. He was obsessed with Hollywood and he created beautiful films inspired by Hollywood with images and music to show Nazi rallies and films were really used as a way to entertain but also brainwash a lot of German people. Another aspect that Joseph Goebbels relied on, as I mentioned before, was the use of rallies. So there were propaganda films of Nazi party rallies which were quite emotional and they combined uniform, music, flags and symbols to create a powerful feeling of belonging amongst German people which was really, really powerful and very convincing. Also, Goebbels relied on radios and the Reich radio company was set up and many cheap radios were made and given to Germans for free. Thus, 70% of German homes had a radio and the radio only promoted Nazi messages to millions of homes. This was essentially a free way for the Nazis to essentially uh, indoctrinate people day and night. And especially do remember that this was a time that people didn't really have TV. So radio was the only form of entertainment and hence it was such an effective indoctrination system. Another way uh, Joseph Goebbels really achieved propaganda and created an effective propaganda machine was through the press. So the press, in other words, means newspapers and books, and the Nazis created Eher Verlag, and by 1939, this was the only publisher. Journalists and editors had to publish Nazi information through this. Another aspect is the autobahns and these were the motorways built during Nazi Germany and they were glorified as huge Nazi achievements. Another thing that Joseph Goebbels really relied on was the use of social rituals and conformity. So people had to do lots of actions and gestures which showed conformity. For instance, the German greeting each morning had to be a Hail Hitler salute. There were Nazi events to replace religious events such as, for example, on the 30th of January, there was a day of seizing power to be celebrated. On the 20th of April, this was Hitler's birthday. On the 9th of November, remembering the Munich Putsch. All of these were really, really powerful ways of making an indoctrinating people and really weaving in Nazism into the tapestry and the fabric of people's lives. However, as I've mentioned before, Himmler was another element of Hitler establishing his dictatorship. People who were not convinced through propaganda were usually convinced through terror and coercion. Now Himmler was a key leader of the SS and he hired Heydrich in 1931 to lead the SD which is an intelligence agency and the Gestapo which is a secret service police. Now Himmler wanted the SS to take over the police and he established a Reich police force and the Nazis used terror and violence through the SS and the Gestapo against people who rebelled. These were the people who were not moved by the propaganda ideals and they rejected Nazism. This was effective because terror essentially deterred political opponents and it created the racial Nazi state. And by 1933, the SS had grown to 52,000 men. Now, to distinguish the SS, Himmler gave them a black uniform with death's head as its logo, and Himmler would later use the SS and the Gestapo to oversee the concentration camps, in other words, the death camps, where millions were sent to be tortured and killed. Now, Himmler also established Dachau, which was the first concentration camp, and he gave SS guards training to destroy any feelings of humanity they might have with prisoners. Dachau would be the model for all future concentration camps, the most famous concentration camp being Auschwitz in Poland. Now, the SS would arrest opponents and send them to concentration camp, and Hitler created a final solution to all Jews. In other words, the final solution was that 
Jews can only be dealt with through killing and extermination. Of course, this is when Himmler sent them all to concentration camp and the Holocaust, which meant millions of Jewish people dying, millions of innocent people dying. Other concentration camps, in addition, or rather, other concentration camp victims, in addition to Jewish people, were political rebels, communists, homosexuals, alcoholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, disabled people, the work shy, as well as homeless people. Now, in spite of all of this, there was still resistance. Now, there were many forms of resistance. Many German people inwardly rejected the Nazis. However, they knew that if they spoke up, they would get arrested and get sent to concentration camp. Another aspect of resistance was the Confessing Church, and this was set up by Dietrich Bonhoeffer to try and go against Nazi attempts to control the church. However, he unfortunately and sadly died at a concentration camp. Also, Georg Elster, a man who tried to blow up Hitler in Munich in November 1938, was another key example of someone who resisted but also worked with lots of secret underground people who were quite close to Hitler in order to try and assassinate him. However, his assassination attempt proved futile. Now, there was also the Red Orchestra, which was a network of middle-class communists centred in Berlin and Hamburg. However, they were destroyed by the Gestapo in 1942-1943. The Edelweiss Pirates were also formed as a youth resistance group in 1939, and they were working-class youth who fought against the Nazis. There was also the Stoffender Berg bomb plot of 1944. Now, many resistance groups led by a man called Stoffenberg got together to overthrow Hitler. Hitler did have minor injuries as a result of this attack, but the Gestapo arrested over 7,000 people and executed 4,980 people as a result of this. So that's all when it comes to understanding Hitler and how he established a dictatorship through propaganda as well as terror. I hope you found this video useful and thank you so much for listening.